Hey guys, welcome back to Coding Shoding with NJ. Today we are going to learn how to install Redis on Windows and then integrate it with PHP. The reason I'm doing this video is because Redis is widely used as a cache in our web stack. If for each client query, our server has to talk to database, then it's going to affect the performance of our website. Because databases store its data on hard drive and every query needs to be answered from hard drive. Since accessing hard drive is much slower than accessing data directly from memory, this is going to negatively impact our website's response time. And time is money, as you know. The second example where having a cache becomes a necessity is when our website has to get its data from a third party using its API. Now, most of the professional level database providers are charging per access to its data through API calls. So rather than calling third-party API for each client request asking for the same data, we can only call third-party API just once, store the data locally, and then for subsequent client queries, we can send locally stored data. Okay, so now we know the significance of cache. Let's talk about Redis. When it comes to caching, Redis is the most popular choice. But the problem is that Redis is only developed for Linux-based systems officially. If you are Windows-based developer, there is no straightforward path for using Redis. Since there is no standard version, different people or companies have tried to develop Windows version of Redis, which is obviously confusing if you are new to Redis. I have gone through it and I don't want you to go through it. Therefore, I am making this video. And now let's talk about installation. Basically, there are two ways to install Redis on Windows. Both of these are provided by Microsoft. One is relatively complicated because using it forces you to have at least very basic knowledge of Linux, at least during the installation phase. The other one is basically a software developed by Microsoft for Windows operating system. So here you have nothing to do with Linux at all. But apparently Microsoft prefers us to use first one. Therefore, it has stopped updating the software. But I have used Redis for Windows software and it pretty much does everything current version of official Redis is capable of. Therefore, I am going to go with the second method. So let's get started. You can get Windows version of Redis from this side. You have to install this first version 3.2.100. So you can either install zipped version or Microsoft installer. I'm going to go with Microsoft installer. Now let's install it. It's pretty straightforward. So I'm going to install it on C drive. You can choose any path you like. Click on this next. This is the port number where our Redis is going to run. This is the default port, but if you want, you can change it. I'm keeping the default port. Next and install. Okay, now installation is complete. Let me click on the finish. Now in order to check if Redis has been installed or not, let me go to the command prompt. And because Redis has been added to the path environment variable, that means I can access it from anywhere I like. Now, before I write any Redis command, um, a Redis basically comes in two parts. The first one is Redis server and the second one is that client program through which you can access the Redis server. If you are on Linux based Redis or you have chosen the other way of installing Redis on Windows, then you have to explicitly start the server first and then you have to start the client. But for this version, you only have to call the client and it's going to start the server anyway. So to start the client, the command is redis-cli. Now if the prompt changes to something like that, it means Redis server has successfully started and this is where it's listening. So the first part is local IP address and the second one is the port number. Now to be extra certain that our server is running and capable of accepting the commands and responding back, the command of the choice is ping. And if it returns pong, that means our server is not only running properly, it's able to listen to our commands and responds accordingly. Now that we have successfully installed Redis on Windows, we have to connect it with PHP so that we are able to access Redis 
from PHP programs. And for that part, we need a special package, which we are going to get from packages. So this is the website packages.org. And if you write, and the name of the package that we are looking for is called Predis. So this is the package we are interested in. And it says we have to execute this command to install this package in our PHP program. For each PHP program, we have to install this package separately because Composer doesn't globally install the packages. So let me open my Visual Studio code. So I have created an empty directory named redis.php and in this directory, I'm going to create a file index.php. And as we just discussed, the first thing that we have to do is we have to install the package. So the command was composer require Predis slash Predis. Okay, now the now the package has been downloaded. As you can see, another folder with the name vendor has been created and two more files. So let's click on composer.json and if you can see the dependency has been mentioned over here. So that means the package has been created as a dependency and Composer has taken care of downloading it. Okay, in the index.php, in the index.php file, the only thing that we need to do is create an instance of Predis object. So to do that, first of all, we have to get this autoload.php from this vendor folder. Now next thing is that within this Predis package, we have a class called client. We are interested in creating an instance of that class. New Predis client. Now this is going to create an instance of client in the Predis package. This Redis variable now holds an instance of Redis client. Now, after getting access to that Redis client, we can send any request to the Redis server and get the replies back from the server as well. Now, because this Redis variable is actually referring to our Redis client and when we were using Redis client directly, the command that we sent to the server and got the reply back was ping. So we are going to use the same command over here. So to do that, we have to call ping function. And we want its response to be displayed on the browser. So echo. So that's it. We don't have to do anything else. Now all we need to do, we want to see this output on the browser. So to do that, we have to start our PHP web server from where we are going to, from where we are going to access this index.php. And the moment we access this index.php, this index.php is going to create this variable redis and going to send a request to the redis server with the ping command and the response is going to be displayed in the browser so let's start the server okay now server is running on localhost port 8080 so let's start it says predis not found I'm supposed to write backslash. Let's refresh the page. And as you can see, we got the pong as, an, as a response. That means our PHP has successfully connected with the Redis client and sent first request, which was ping, and got the reply, which is being displayed over here. Now we can execute any Redis command that we like using this PHP program. This is the end of today's video. In next video, we will see how can we cache database responses in the Redis. And next time, instead of going to the database server, we will get responses from the Redis. Thanks.